Hello everyone. This is the first of a series of nine tutorials dedicated to atmospheric perspective in Blender 4.1 through node compositing in post-production. Aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective refers to the decrease in contrast and saturation with distance in wide environments or backgrounds. Additionally, colors usually tend to shift towards the color of the background, which can be bluish during the day or reddish around sunset or sunrise. It's also possible to blur the image with distance or add other effects. In any case, we need to obtain a mask based on the distance from the virtual camera, so that we can use that mask to implement the effects. So we'll be creating a series of effects, specifically blurring, blue tint, desaturation and contrast reduction in this order. However, note that you don't have to use all of these effects. I will showcase them one by one to make the series as comprehensive as possible, but you can choose to use only some or even just one of these effects, depending on your needs. Before we go on, I remind you that, as it happens with most of my tutorials, the text versions of the video tutorials of this series are available for free download at the link provided in the description. Ok, that being said, let's begin. The scene you see was created in Blender 4.1 with the TX Ant Landscape add-on, which is a textured version of the Ant Landscape add-on. I'll be making a tutorial on this topic soon. The lighting is provided by the Nishita Sky Texture only, applied to Word. To obtain information about the distance of objects from the camera, we can use the depth information from render layers. Before moving forward, we need to decide whether to say Z or Z for the last letter of the alphabet. I will opt for the Z one and I hope you won't close this tutorial for this reason. The Depth Render Pass is indeed active by default in the Passes Data tab of the View Layer panel, but in the Properties Editor it's called Z. So we don't need to remember to activate it before rendering, but we need to know that it's called differently here. However, before starting the rendering and moving on to compositing, we need to set a couple of parameters, which we'll see in the next episode. For this first introductory video of the series, though, we'll stop here. See you soon!